Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Today, finally, we will begin working on our new 3D printer, which is the replacement of the Tevo Black Widow. As you might remember, the control box got destroyed and... Yeah, it could have been rescued, it didn't have too much damage, but some other stuff was going on in my life and kind of didn't feel like fixing it and after some time I wanted to make a fresh start so we'll doing a custom new build this time it's based on the Voron 2.2 project uh, which is a Core XY 3D printer initially I will be using Voron 2's default extruder which is the Mobius 3.1 extruder but after I get things running I'll probably switch back to the flex 3 drive because I was very happy with that extruder and yeah I'll try to salvage the extruder and the hot end parts I'll get the duet Wi-Fi from the Black Widow obviously and yeah probably I'll get the precision piezo sensor as well I want to use that I don't want to use the inductive pro probe that the Voron design uses because I was very happy with the precision piezo well, we will see. Uh, as you can see here, there are quite a bit of parts that need to be ordered. There's the bomb list. This is the build manual for the printer itself. It is 120 pages. And I doubled up, as you can see, save, to save on some paper. But this will take some time. And I will cover all of the build process on video, so you will be able to see. So this won't be like the Black Widow where I start with a pre-built 3D printer and just do mods. I will build this from scratch on video. Then I will get to modding it. I'll probably do dual extrusions, different extruder, and you know stuff like that. We'll see. And this is the manual for the their Mobius extruder. As I said, I will initially start with their extruder because there is no official mount for the Flex 3 drive on the Voron 2.2 and, well, I don't have a working 3D printer so um, I can't prototype and design something like that. So, initially, as I said, I will start with this, which this is a Bowden style extruder, which I've already told you in the past, I'm not really a fan of that, so I'm pretty sure this will change very quickly, but yeah, as I said initially, ex the extruder will be this one. And yeah, so that's all I, that's all I wanted to say. I started salvaging some parts, and yeah, as you can see, it's a mess here, but in the end, I managed to salvage the original E3D hot hand assembly. I removed the heater cartridge and the PT100 thermistor because I think I'm going to replace this with the triangle lab ones. I want to. I salvaged the PT100 thermistor as I said, so I don't need a new one. I also salvaged the 24 volt heater, but I'm not going to be able to use this because I'm switching to 12 volts in this case. So, yeah, it sounds like a downgrade, but. Hopefully it won't be a big problem and I also have the flex 3 drive extruder here and here are the parts for this. I also have the, the precision piezo sensor here but as you can see I had to go medieval on it so I couldn't salvage any of the 3D printed parts for it and the blame for that is this screw i don't know if the camera is focusing properly or not it just got stuck in there refused to get removed and yeah i tried a few different screws i tried cutting it nothing really worked so i had to get medieval as i said but in the end at least i managed to salvage the precision piezo board mostly here was a chip on it but I don't think that's a big issue because I don't think there are any traces going through that. It just looks like just a big ground plane. And yeah, this, this is probably just a double sided board, anyways. This isn't something overly complicated, so I'm pretty confident that this will still work. 
whether I'm going to use this or not, that depends, obviously because of the destroyed parts, I'm not going to be able to use this initially, because uh, at, in, in, even in the best case scenario, I have to reprint these parts, hopefully they're available online, I think they were, I think the precision piece was open source, but yeah, I don't remember exactly, it's been uh, over a year. But anyway, uh, I think they were available, so I'll reprint those and try to reuse this base case scenario. But before that, obviously, I need a different bed leveling sensor, and for that, I'll probably use just some sort of uh, inductive probe, whatever is in the bomb list for the Voron 2.2 project. Uh, here, I also have the working motors from the 3 Tevo Black Widow printer. Four of these are the stock Tevo motors, uh, as you can see here. I also have one Tevo pancake motor. And I have two E3D motors here. This also was a 3D model. Yes, this is the, another 3D model that was used with the flex through drive. I'm not going to remove this because it worked good well, so I want to keep it. And yeah, I also have the geared motor, but I don't know if any of you remember it, but this was damaged, so yeah. So that's it so far. I'll do a little bit more and I'll come back to you. I checked the recommended specs for the Voron 2.2 based on the values between the bomb and looks like I'm not going to be able to reuse these motors. I'm able to repurpose these Tevo motors. They are powerful enough to run the axes but I do need six of these and I have four so I'm going to order three more just in case one of them got damaged or something and we will reuse those I found a few BAT85 diodes which I'll reuse for the project because apparently I need one of these and I also found my Duet Wi-Fi board which obviously we will reuse in this project along with the Due X5 expansion board and the PT100 daughter board already mounted here it has been a week since the last recording in this video and nothing has arrived so far but I have decided to change a few things and one of them being is I'm not I'm no longer planning on using the Duet Wi-Fi I plan on using this SKR 1.3 board actually two of these and uh, there are a few reasons for this one of them being two of these boards with uh, TMC2209 drivers, 10 of those, is cheaper than just buying a Dua X5 expansion board, which I would need. But that's not the only reason, because they're pretty close. And the reason is the default firmware for the uh, Voron 2.2 is Clipper, and if you use that, well, using a Duet Wi-Fi is pretty much pointless. If I don't use that and use RepRap firmware, then I won't have community support and plus if you actually look at it the TMC 2209s other than being rated for a lower amperage or current uh, it's, they are pretty much the same and it's newer so well, for example stall cord is 4 instead of 2 it doesn't really that those things don't really matter they are marketing terms but yeah it's a newer and pretty much equal for our purpose uh, driver because we, we won't need more than 2 amps so yeah it just makes sense to use this and looking at it it is a 32 bit board but it's still obviously lower and than the Duet it's, it won't have the same processor but at least for a Chinese board this is properly fused so this is not like the MKS Chen that I used My uh, I have two down there are two downsides of using this, one of them being this doesn't have native support for a PT100 thermistor, so I will not have to use a daughter board because I want to use a PT100 thermistor. 
and two, well, I don't know if there's a different picture of the screw terminals, but yeah, th these are pretty much shit. These are the lowest quality Chinese screw terminals that you could find, so... <coughs> sorry. Uh, so we'll have to solder the wires, I think, because I don't want to just put the wires in these things. I remember how bad these were with the MKS Gen. Uh, it, this also has the support for the LCD, which Voron also has a built-in mount, but I'm probably not going to use that because, well, I don't think there is any point in using this. Even with the Black Widow when I had it, I never used it. And with the Voron, I'll be using Octoprint. Uh, and yeah, now we'll have the Octoprint installed on the same Raspberry Pi that has Clipper installed as well. And yeah, you will see the wiring in more detail later on. Uh, yeah, you can compare the drivers, I'm not really losing much and another advantage of doing this with the, this build is that I will have my Duet Wi-Fi ready to go when I decide to build my CNC that is coming in a later video but don't expect it anytime soon because well, I first have to finish the 3D printer and then I need to save some money to build the CNC but what I can say right now, the plan is to use the extrusions and some other parts of the Black Widow and repurpose them on the CNC build. But yeah, you will see when it happens. And yeah, as I said, there is a long time. Uh, I also need to order a few more parts. I will use the, the Triangle Lab runout sensor because the runout sensor that I had was pretty bad. I will use the Triangle Lab E3D clone attend and the reason being is uh, it comes with a copper copper heat block instead of the aluminium one and it has titanium, titanium obviously, heat break instead of again the aluminium one so this is higher quality and the nozzle this comes with is also plated copper and yeah, these are just some bomb parts needed for the build. I will use genuine Kinovo heater. I haven't ordered this yet, but yeah, I don't trust any cheap Chinese shit with AC power. And yeah, Kinovo is a Chinese company, but they do make quality stuff. That's all that matters to me. So yeah, I will be using the herbs. The motors, I'm not going to be able to order the uh, Tevo motors like I said a few minutes ago in the video and that's because they charge about $55 or something ridiculous for shipping because they ship with DHL they removed their China post option and yeah it doesn't make any sense to pay that money if I'm going to pay that I'll go with the E3D motors here because they are higher quality Yeah, I'll also have these parts from Mouser to be ordered, fans and SSR, etc. This is Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to order the FX3 driver, I'll remove that. Uh, yeah, I'll all order my MGN9 rails from Robotic. I'm not going to go with genuine Hyven ones because, well, these rails cost $100 versus. 500 600 dollars for the high one ones i just can't justify paying that much and these do have good reviews and they are recommended in the bomb so i trust that them to be a decent quality at least so yeah i'll go with those here i i have a bunch of power supplies i know i said i was going to switch 12 volts because that's what they recommend but i changed my mind i'm sticking with 24 volts and for that to fit the enclosure I do need a different power supply I can't reuse the one from the Tevo Black Widow so I'll use this and I do need a 5 volt rail for the Raspberry Pi and a few other things and I need a 12 volt rail for the LED lighting so yeah it will have 3 power supplies in it probably overkill but whatever and in the long run I want to switch to this Attend from the Clone E3D. And it is the Slice Engineering Mosquito. It does accept the same nozzles that the rest of the uh, E3D Hotends use. 
and I'll come to what I want to use eventually with the nozzle as well and yeah this is a good design this is actually tiny don't this looks big here but yeah it, you you will see it is tiny I might even get two of these to use like a dual extrusion at some point but yeah that's not that the plan yet and yeah this is another thing that I want to use in the long run is if I do only go with one mosquito extruder I want to go with this this thing splices up to four filaments and feeds it to the extruder so you will have one nozzle one hot end uh, but this this thing will let you print with multiple materials multiple colors at least um, it is a bit expensive because well it is seven hundred dollars in discount it will be eight hundred it was eight hundred as well and you need to add this thing as well at sixty dollars so, yeah, it is a pretty expensive thing so it's not happening anytime soon and as for the parts that I already ordered I ordered NEMA 17 heatsinks not that necessary but I might as well go with them some cables leaving and yeah some connectors and whole bunch of screws and the inductive probe that I mentioned it, say, oh, it says it's a genuine Fotec we'll see so hardware as you can see here uh, dampener for the motor and a shaft that I will need to cut some wires, thermal protection, washers rubber foot for vibration I don't know why it repeated this but yeah I already talked about this bearings and the mechanical stuff, the pulleys and the looped belts and this is where I ordered my aluminium extrusions I did not go with uh, genuine Misumi ones I said I just found a local supplier and the reason is well these are one Misumi doesn't ship to where I live and two these are much much cheaper so yeah I will have to modify these I will have to drill some holes in them and tap the ends of them to do the blind joints but you will see when I get to that also I didn't mention but I, I will go with genuine gate spells for the build so this is 6 millimeters and no this is 6 millimeters and this is 9 millimeters so yeah both of these I will go with genuine gate spells I checked even though it's AliExpress they do ship genuine ones and the reason is well my experience with the original belts of the Black Widow and the steel core belts that I ordered afterwards they weren't great so I want to go with something decent quality this time so that's it for the video I know I didn't get much done in this video but well that's just there isn't much I, I can do I don't have any parts yet that's it for this video so I hope you enjoyed it and hope you're excited for the new 3d printer and if you are please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching